So we are trying to find the values of the six trig functions. <clears throat> that would be the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, <clears throat> given this angle theta. Okay, so this is a third quadrant angle. Hopefully we notice that both the x and the y values are negative in the third quadrant, which is good. <clears throat> but we're not actually going to use that angle because we want to make a right triangle. So we are going to drop a vertical line back to our horizontal axis and come over here. So we're going to use this right triangle and this reference angle in order to find those three or rather six trig values. <clears throat> okay, so hopefully we recognize that in the third quadrant, this is the x value. So negative root 3 is the x and negative 1 is the y value. So x is always a horizontal length, and y is always the vertical length. <clears throat> and what we need to do first is figure out what the radius is. So we need to find this length here, the radial length. And to do that, we use our friend Pythagoras and his amazing theorem. So negative root 3 squared plus negative 1 squared equals radius squared. <clears throat> So positive 3 plus 1 is radius squared, 3 plus 1 is 4, so this has a radial length of 2. Okay, a positive radius. If you do this enough, you will know that the radius of any circle is always positive, no matter which way it might point. So your radius should always be positive. So with those three numbers, okay, knowing that this is the... This is the y value, this is the x value, and that's your radius. We can write down our six trig ratios. Let's see. Oh, well, there they are. <clears throat> so the sine is a ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent, or rather the y over the r. So the sine of this angle is going to be negative 1 over 2. So the sine is a negative because the y value is negative. <clears throat> the cosine is going to be a ratio of the x to the r. So the x is negative root 3 and the radius is 2. So negative root 3 over 2. <clears throat> the tangent is an x, or rather the y ratio to the x ratio, or rather y length to the x length. So the y was negative 1, and the x was negative root 3. So that becomes a positive 1 over root 3, which, if we want to rationalize, becomes root 3 over 3. <clears throat> okay. Now, this is what you're going to see on your standardized test, something like this as the answer. But for calculus nowadays, 1 over radical 3 is perfectly okay to leave it like that, but ask your teacher how he or she wants it, because they're the one that's going to give you the grade. Now, the cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine, so that's comparing the r over the y, which is 2 over negative 1, so we have a cosecant value of negative 2. The secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So that's r over x, which is 2 over negative root 3, which, if we want to rationalize, becomes negative 2 roots of 3 over 3, the cosecant value. And the tangent is the reciprocal of the cotangent, or rather switch that. So cotangent is x over y which is negative root 3 over negative 1. So our cotangent value is just root 3. So if we're given a point, we're able to take that point and calculate the radius. And knowing our six trig ratios, we can write down all of the values from there.